Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be going over the common issues caused by a faulty BMW FRM, also known as a footwell module, along with what can be done to repair it. Unfortunately on my car, I did have a learning experience from this issue. I was scanning the car with ISTA while the battery died, and this is what caused the module to brick up. For this, I'm using my 2010 BMW 335D E90 as an example. If you are scanning the car using ISTA and the FRM is shown in red, this means that there is no signal between the module and the scanner. The module heading would be shown as red. If you are using an OBD2 reader, such as this Foxwell scanner I have, a faulty module will show fault codes. The severity of the errors between the cars will vary. Beyond breaking up from having the battery die during a scan, other causes which can cause the module to malfunction would be corrosion on the electrical connectors, voltage spikes, or generic voltage issues. Faults which I experienced which I believe was every possible problem was my doors not locking using the key fob, no signal lights, no fog lights, no high beams, no reverse lights, no license plate lights, no interior lights, no gauge cluster lights, windows not working, no power mirrors, fault codes on the gauge cluster, active headlights not working, driver's door air saying it's open, climate control not working correctly, and auto fold mirrors not working. My car was basically undrivable due to the severity of the errors. I do however have a friend which has a faulty FRM as well, however it only shows a few faults such as one headlight and taillight not working on startup and some FRM fault codes. As for the pairs, this can be something simple as cleaning the connectors or more complicated ones such as having to replace the module. If corrosion is found on the module connectors or as preventative maintenance, I would highly recommend using Deoxit D100L which comes as a kit. This kit includes various cleaning tools if there is any corrosion. If there isn't any corrosion, the solution will protect the connection and prevent that from happening. A link to this will be included in the video description to Keg Laboratories. Some OBD2 scanners may be able to reset the module. This can be done by yourself or having a shop do this. I tried having this done by a shop, however they were unsuccessful. Instead I was required to remove the module, then had someone reprogram it completely. This only took about 20 minutes and the VIN is required. You may be lucky to find someone local, other times you'll have to send it out. Various services can be found online. Equipment can be purchased for such a procedure, However, it's around $1,000 for the proper tools from what I could find. If the module is damaged, then a replacement is needed. New or used options are available. A used module can be reprogrammed for your car and is most likely a much cheaper option than purchasing a new one. Some cars also had interchangeable modules between different series of modules, which provide more options for replacements. When scanning the car, always make sure the battery is fully charged. If a scanner programming is done for longer periods of time, then hook up a trickle charger so the battery doesn't become depleted. New videos are released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found the store helpful. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.